The South American continent boasts no shortage of contrasts, from snowy mountains to dusty plains and deep green jungle. And as an individual country, Argentina can tick every one of those boxes, as we'll discover now as we once again join mountain biking legend Hans Ray and German freeride pro Tibar Simai on an adventure through some of the most spectacular regions in the north of the country. Our group had previously ridden a disused railway line from the Bolivian border. Now, as photographer and instigator of the trip, Dan Milner explains the aim was to head for the hills. It seemed a bit daft, really, to be up in northern Argentina and just do this railway ride on its own as a, as a single project. So we looked around in the planning stage to try and find something else we could, we could tie into it. And sure enough, the contact proposed a trip across a traverse of the mountains that actually starts pretty close to where our railway trip finished. So the two linked in really well, almost seamlessly, to be honest. And his proposal was, was a three-day over-the-mountain traverse starting in this high mountains, very, very arid zone in Tilcara and finishing the deep jungle. Yeah, today is the uh, first day of our big mountain traverse. We are uh, just getting packed up here. Our driver has been an hour late. So hopefully we're not going to run out of daytime. Here we are, Northern Argentina, round two. And today we're starting a three day traverse of the mountains, which starts here amongst a cactus forest and on to the other side of the mountains in some real forest, just to show us what kind of variety of diversity Argentina has. But enough of the botanical talk, let's get on with it. We're 3,000 meters up and the only way is up. So onwards. We've got 1,200 metres of climbing today, probably a bit of a breeze. Cleverly, we've roped in a few friends to help us on this first 1,000 metre climb, to haul some of our gear up to the refuge that we're staying in tonight. Let's go and say hello to uh, Francisco, Frederico and Jorge. That box looked like a box of food, so I think that's the first thing that needs to come with us. If anything, we'll throw out some Hans's excess stuff, make room for a bit more food. It's a bit more important. Yeah, yeah I heard that. Yeah, I think we're gonna ride this fire road and uh, the moolies will, will hike that little trail. And then uh, I think, yeah, we will have maybe two hours, three hours of hiking as well, with the bikes on our back. But um, yeah, it's gonna be good. Yes, well, this trail was made uh, probably a thousand years ago. Uh, this trail, actually, the name is Tilcara Calilewa because it uh, starts in Tilcara and it ends in Calilewa. Um, this trail starts like, um, a uh, way to exchange certain things between the highlands and the lowlands. The people they do it this trail for uh, hundreds of years with llamas uh, carrying all the, the stuff to exchange certain things, like for example salt for fruit or for different vegetables. The first day we are going to start at 3000 meters uh, above the sea level and then we will reach to 4200 meters above the sea level. Probably the, the first part, the, to the highest point, it will take us something like four to five hours, and then we will go downhill for eight kilometers to 3,000 meters. The last day, we, we will reach to the middle of the jungle with waterfalls and some rivers, some huge rivers, so it's a really nice trip.
was warming up. We're about halfway up now. It's time to feel the altitude. Well, the mules have overtaken us. But hopefully, by the time we get to the pass, 4,200 meters, we'll have a splendid banquet picnic laid out for us. Walk in the park, really. Walk in the park. I live for this kind of backcountry adventures. This is an awesome trek. We've been going for about four hours uphill and it is spectacular. Really, really exhausting, but I think it's a big success and it's like, it's such a nice scenery. It's amazing being up to 4,000 meters and yeah, we did it, awesome. We've only got 200 more meters to go over the pass, but it seems impolite not to stop here. I told you, they're going to lay a picnic out for us. Bang in. We've done 1,200 meters of climbing. We've gone over the pass at 4,200, and we've dropped down a bit. And we're not done yet. We miss rolling in. Amazing, beautiful place. Really feels like you're in the middle of nowhere, right over the top of the Andes. Definitely feeling the altitude now. If you if you weren't there, I was there. I would be right there. For sure. It's scary. It's super scary. I think this is where the refuge was meant to be. Maybe we have to go back. But... Yeah. Where the trail ends, part two. <laughs> where the trail ends, yeah. Where... Guess we gotta walk around. It's nearly dark. <laughs>
What was that? 10 and a half hours. It's about 20 minutes off complete darkness. 1300 meters of up. But we're there. This is it? Nice. Looking pretty good. The best thing about using mules to bring your stuff up to the refuge isn't that they bring your stuff up to the refuge, it's that you can hide things like this in your luggage. These bad boys, two of them, tonight, it's going off. Might do if we stay awake long enough to drink any. Start of day two, splendid night's sleep in this very remote little refuge, 3,200 meters up in these, these here Argentinian mountains. Anyway, uh, I don't know which way it is now, but apparently it's up. But it looks all right. We start on the shady side, which is quite nice. We've got a climb out and at least we'll get a little reprieve from the sun to start with. Francesco has a flat tire and trying to get ready here in the morning, get a quick start, it's gonna be a really long day and we have to clean up our shelter from last night and Francesco found himself with a flat. We are ready, backpack is pretty much full, breakfast done and uh, lunch prepared. The refuge is really, really nice. First I thought, uh, okay, it's maybe something where people live, but this is like, there's nobody, and, but everything was there. It was water, we had like, we had food from the, from the mules and stuff. So, yeah, pretty good. We had brought our supply, our food and sleeping bags on the horses, but we won't have them today. So only for the first day we have that supply. Today we carry everything, so heavier bags, and word has it, today is even a tougher day. So. Hans Ray. <laughs> Whatever. Two hours into day two and we've climbed about 400 meters. We're not done yet. Apparently just over that corner is where we start the descent. And it's not a moment too soon because there's three condors flying around our heads and they're looking really hungry. Dude, that thing is big. So we're leaving the desert, heading to the jungle. The, sun, the scenery, the landscapes are all changing. So we're getting really green and mossy. And some cloud. Apparently it's six kilometers of downhill now. We'll see how that shapes up. Yeah. 
too close. Yeah, I saw you riding there and I hit this and, and just and the next like rock and rock and went down. But um, yeah, fine. So we've had a bit of a crash and a bit of damage to one of the bikes. One of the brake levers is bent right up. And the issue is gonna be, can we fix it? Can we bend it back into place out here without snapping it off? If it snaps off, we've got one bike with only a front brake, which will be catastrophic. This is kind of the, like the adds um, the pressure of uh, when we're filming to these sort of trips. And then when it does go wrong, we're really in the middle of nowhere right now. Let's think about this for a second because if you break this off, we got no brakes. Um, First time I went off this year, um, uh, I was following Hans really close to do some GoPro shots and I didn't, I really didn't see the line, so he was uh, on that little rock thing, he was a bit more to the right and I took the left and yeah, there was just a rock in front of me and it just went over the handlebars. Um, lucky that I, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm good, so no, no scratches, no nothing, but I bent my, my brake lever and yeah, we're trying to fix it. Hang on a second, hang on a second. No, 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 it's like, maybe I can. And considering we have about 30 kilometers of downhill coming up. Weird, but it would work. It's gonna, it's gonna hurt your fingers. And uh, maybe it's, it's all right for another day of riding, but um, yeah, maybe, maybe take it a more uh, easy now. Also, like stuff like this is pretty nice to ride. This is hands down one of the best days I've ever had in the backcountry. Forest to forest, there we are. We're now deeply embedded in a pretty thick jungle at the end of day two. The whole drop down off the high mountains, shrouded in mist, and it spat us out of this. We've got one last climb, and that is downhill to the little village where we're staying tonight. Apparently, there's no refrigerator, is there? But there is beer. Oh, it's been an incredibly rewarding day. Very varied. Coming over from high mountains. Incredible landscapes, much better than any of us thought or expected. But we've had to put in a fair bit of effort to reach it all. And I can feel that now. <sighs> That's it, the top of the last climb of day two. And I think the only way you could have trained for that bit is to have just carried your bike around the, the greenhouses of Kew Gardens for a day, just carried them round and round and got them to turn the heat up. Uh, anyway, we're there.
Hey, That's it. Francesco, that was awesome, man. That's one of the best rides ever. <laughs> it was a really good day. Dan, good job, man. <laughs> Tibinator. <laughs> nice wow. one. Very nice. Good, ride, man. good one. Uh, Here we are, end of day two. This little guy's house, or this guy's little house, whichever way you want to look at it. 2,600 meters of descent and 1,300 up today. It's been a long 11 hours. But the guys popped some beers already. Doing beer camp. It's an awesome ride. <laughs> Now you saw it, it's pretty loose. Yeah, it's a little bit too loose now, but... Yeah, yesterday, day two of our trip across the mountains was maybe one of my all-time days ever on a bike. It was awesome. I mean, it had just everything. We started out at this refugee in the middle of nowhere and we, we had to cross the river and climb up straight away on these ridges and these ridges went on for probably 10 kilometers or so. There were beautiful views. I mean, it looked like the Napali coast in Kauai or so and, and it, it was just breathtaking. I mean, a perfectly carved single trail, condors flying through the air and these lush green valleys with views forever. I mean, I, I was in heaven. At the end, the last three hours, we, we reached the jungle and the, the, we were in the clouds and the fog and it was quite refreshing to have that, but it was completely different landscape and the trails became technical and, and slick and, and right before we got back, um, we had to do one last uphill, which took like almost an hour of hiking the bike on a steep hill, but overall, a top day. Francisco's just shown us his new body armor. It's like a dream come true. Uh, riding with these guys is, is so amazing. I start with thinking that I'm going to show you certain things. And at the end, uh, I realized that, for example, Hans and Tibor, they show me certain things about the bikes and everything. They are really open. They, they want to share how they do this, this stuff. And it's really funny for me. It's, it's amazing, and these guys are really, really nice. It's the champion breakfast. <laughs> Drink that stuff all the time. So today, day three, uh, we're going to San Francisco, which um, yeah, I really, I, I really uh, want to see like the landscape. Um, our guide told us like we're passing by waterfalls and this must be really unique so I'm really looking forward to I have to be careful today, um, my brake doesn't work that good. I don't bring another brake lever except uh, yeah, a few other spare parts. Francisco's just told me to watch out because most of the stuff I'm walking around on seems to be sort of man-eating plants. Absolutely mental. This is like the absolute perfect photo trail for me. Unfortunately, the downside of that means that every 20 yards we stop for another photo, but small price to pay for shooting in probably what is one of the most spectacular and beautiful areas of the world I've ever seen. Absolutely mind blown. Brilliant. I just hope we can make it out alive.
mosquitoes. Keep us there, then you need to be just coming, exiting that first dirt, that turn. I think people uh, forget when they when they watch these films how much goes into actually getting the shots and the bits of video and things like that. Like if we had blasted this from the top, right from uh, where we stayed last night, it'd be one hell of a ride. We've just been hammering it and we'd be sweating. But but when you get to stop and shoot as well, you get a chance to take everything in, which you don't do while you're riding. So if you're when you're riding, you've got to concentrate so much on the trail and not falling off. So it gives you a chance to do that and. At the end of the day, just riding bikes seems such a good excuse to just go to foreign places and see what's see what's there and it just experience all the all the rich variety and landscapes and experiences and people you meet and the bike. It's just such a good excuse to go and do that sort of thing. Nice. Oh my god. There we are, that's it. Three days to get to this, which is our bar. This is pretty much the end of the trail. I can't believe how far these people we stayed with last night live from the nearest road. That's not even the nearest village. And it's been like probably three hours and we have one last hike to the road and then we are done. Awesome ride. The last three days, they were amazing. They were really amazing. And I have to say, like the last trail we did, it was so incredible. Like all this red dirt, it was like, it was so smooth and the berms, it was so nice. And yeah, it was kind of technical. The uphills were really steep and exhausting. But um, yeah, it was, it was my first adventure, like really adventure. And I have to say, I'm happy that I did it. Thanks. It's been a very special trip to be here in Argentina and the trail we did is definitely something I can highly recommend to any enthusiastic mountain biker who doesn't mind carrying his or her bike little ways. Every yard was amazing, all single track, very rideable challenging just the way we like it.